30 years ago or so, would you have seen an exhibit like this in a major American museum? The dawn of this era is really the early 1980s when we began to see exhibitions of folk art and this thing we call outsider art in major museums. But it is very recent, and before that time, I think it was almost entirely seen in ethnographic museums, in things called folk art museums, and not in general encyclopedic municipal museums. It's way easier to just have a book over there with, you know, a standard history of art and just collect things that look like already in the book. Um, that would make your life much simpler. Um, I think the museums are trying to bring new audiences in, and I think the mantra for our education department is always to have visitors find themselves in the museum. And if you have a museum that's full of you know, Italian altarpieces, then your average Philadelphia city kid is not going to find themselves in the work. I love looking at this. And, you know, it's very basic. It's very kind of has a primitive feel to it that feels just very real. And that his whole life was devoted to his art is, it's pretty remarkable to, to see what he's done. Extremely unusual. Um, it's amazing how he survived with no communication with anybody else and how he branched from just to the visual of what he saw around him to these more mature and very different images. Do you think that you might take some of the things you've seen in this exhibit and maybe like become inspired by them? I guess I would take from, from him uh, the fact that he uses very intelligently uses methods that he just came up with himself. So maybe the inspiration would be that just look inside yourself a little more and not so much at the art that's out there or at the work that's out there already, but just uh, try things, which he didn't have a, any sort of fear of doing. This guy um, used every single minute of his life to do something creative. Um, he picked up soap boxes, he picked up cigarette boxes or just scraps of paper and tied them down onto flat surfaces. Uh, it's, it is very inspirational. Um, makes me want to use my minutes more wisely. <laughs> is it surprising at all to you that this major institution is showing the work of an artist who really was like totally outside the academy, wasn't trained? No, I think that that's a part of what makes this museum so wonderful is, is bringing in you know unknown artists like this and, and mm. making their art more available to other people, to, to all different people in the community. I think that this is genuinely art. I think that people can create art out of their hearts and minds without going to art school. Um, and I also think I'm really interested in the way he just used the, everyday, the everydayness of the materials from pages of catalogs to makeup and crepe paper as a source of color. And I, I just think it's really wonderful. It's a, it's a real tribute to the capacity of people to see, to create, to express themselves. I have a feeling a lot of museums still think of themselves as ivory towers. And I just, that's my personal opinion, is that that's, in a way, the job of the museum, if it's going to go forth and be something interesting in the future, it's going to have to grow like that. It's going to have to show people uh, more about themselves and enable them, open their minds, wake them up, make them creative. It's not just supposed to be like Fort Knox 